Bazaar is intended for mature, open-minded audiences only. If you are easily offended, we suggest you turn this wacky shit straight off. <laughs> Did we ever get confirmation on why they call it the funny bone back there? Uh, it's not funny. Nothing fucking Ooh. funny about it. Nothing funny about it at Although, all. Although, you know... Boy, it would be interesting to look up the etymology of this because you know how there are certain parts of your body that you just whack and it hurts so bad. Like I, I think the knee should have been called the funny bone. Yeah, because you, you ever know, hit your knee so hard that you just like you kind of laugh at it. Like it hurts so bad, you just like a little bit. It just triggers your laughing muscle. Maybe that's I where was it came. Say, from. My favorite thing to whack of uh, <laughs> part is <I'm> listening. <laughs> not my elbow, and it's not my knee. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now that bone is funny. <laughs> That's a Sometimes real bone. It's dead serious. Yeah. Chris, you back? It's a flexible bone. You. You're really quiet. Or I'm too loud. Uh, uh, I don't know. Am I quiet? You're a little quiet, but you're talking quiet too. I think the dynamics always change a little bit as we get going. So yeah. I think you'll probably be fine. I'll keep a keep an ear on it. I told. I totally forgot I was watching uh, Twitch and then you <laughs> text and I was like, oh shit, <laughs> 36. So. I was watching this girl on Twitch for a little while doing some sort of subathon, and I, I don't know how it works. I mean, obviously people subscribe and they are sending her money, but all she's yeah. really doing is sitting around looking pretty. She Occasionally she'll, she'll get on a banana that floats in her hot tub. <laughs> Oh God, that's takes. amorous. Yeah, that's all it takes, I guess. She, uh, she's a special one. I don't think there's anybody on the whole platform of uh, what, Twitch. What, that... What's her name? Amorous. Hmm. Amorous. There's Amorous. Sound familiar, but I, I would, I didn't watch it too long. But I was, I just saw she was oh, doing this a... subathon, and like people kept, they would pay money to keep this live feed going, and she was at, mm. it had gone up to something like a hundred hours oh. i was like are you seriously going to stay live for 100 hours well, i checked in oh, later and there she was sleeping but she was doing it on cam okay so like the uh amsr did i say that right amsr asmr hmm? yes um she adopted it like a few fuck i want to say like a year or two ago hmm. and she's got videos she's got a looping video of her basically making out to, like an ear, they, they they sell microphones that are like a a head with no head, but I've two ears. Those. Yeah, <laughs> and and they're left and right, you know. So like in your audio, that's how you hear it is left and right. Well, she's she makes out with them, you know. She's like licking them and <laughs> breathing real deep into there. What world? I mean, oh, maybe I, maybe Lyle just triggered somebody. I always wonder oh, when hmm. we're mocking ASMR if anyone out there is like. No. <laughs> what do we have for out here? Oh, my. Um, well, John Mark's on his way. I uh, Before oh, we get into on. the news, I, I got a few powerful responses, mostly to my personal messages from our happiness chat last week. And Chris, you straight up quit Facebook live on air, and I'm dying to hear at least a little bit of how that's gone for you so far. But first, I want to read this email um, we got from Lindsay in Baton Rouge. She says, thanks for the great show last week. It really got me thinking about all the things you mentioned, but especially my job satisfaction. I like mm. the people that I work with. I like my boss. I like the amount of money I make. And yet, I hate my job. And it was not a fun realization because of all the things I just mentioned. This was not going to be an easy place to leave. But... I heard your episode. I, w I listened to your episode on Friday morning, and by 4 p.m. on that same Friday, I had given my two weeks' notice. <laughs> so thanks for inspiring me to not wait for happiness to come knock on my door. I will keep you posted on whether this was a terrible mistake or not. Keep the great shows coming, Lindsay. She quit her damn job, son. Um, I do hope that this is a good decision for you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it could be the gravest mistake of your life. I don't think so. I don't see how it could be if you have that realization that you are actually unhappy doing the job. That's interesting that 
I wonder how often that's the case where you like the people you work with. You like your boss. You're satisfied with the money, but you just hate the work. I suppose that probably happens yeah. fairly frequently. But to me, I think a lot of what we hate about our jobs is directly tied to the people that we have to interact with or maybe how we're treated by our employees or managers or the amount of money that we make. It's interesting that all those could be, all those boxes could be checked and you're still answering the poll with <laughs> unsatisfaction. Um, I don't know. That seems <clears throat> interesting to me and really interesting that somebody quit their fucking job because of that little discussion. Is it weird yeah. to think about Baton Rouge and think about Garth Brooks? <laughs> mm, I don't know that connection. He's got a good song. Then going down to Baton Rouge. Mm. Um, oh, Garth. Yeah, I think I had the opposite on that. I didn't really make enough money, but I, I liked the people I worked with. And, eh, you know, boss wasn't too bad at the time. And so, at like, I stayed there for, like, 25 years. Yeah. Yeah. And I easily could have jumped ship, and I totally should have. I mean, I could have doubled my my wage, you know, but I didn't. And I should have. But. You know, it's hard. It's hard you to look there. back on some of those woulda, coulda, shoulda. But I had a lot of woulda, coulda, shouldas over the. I wasn't at the Wenatchee World as long as you were at that job, but I was. I was, you know, when I got laid off in 2011, I had been there almost half my life. Yeah. So that's a significant chunk. It was, it's almost 20 years altogether. That I, w that I worked for that company and tons of things that I, I do wish that I had jumped on board to go do, but it was just fear keeping me because God knows I wasn't, there were times like when Christopher worked there, there was an era, uh, that I liked. I thought we had some good times working there, but overall that was right when things were starting to head into the bad time <laughs> for newspapers. So sure. it got stressful in general. But overall, I just never really liked a lot of the people that I worked under, uh, especially. There are very few managers that I liked to deal with. So, you know, I lost a lot of life under the fluorescent lights in a little cubicle, uh, which is all fine, again, if if you like the work or you like the people. And I didn't really like any of it. It was just well, the, the, the ultimate, you know, cashing it in for a paycheck. And I always get a kick out of when people say, oh, you you signed your band or you sold out or you, you got to deal with this big art uh, gallery or the, this big publication. You're, you sold out. It's like, no, that's not selling out. That's living your dreams. Uh, selling out is cashing out. in a paycheck every fucking day. Just, uh, or, you know, going through the motion of something, even though, you know, this is not good for you. It's not really going anywhere. It's not what you really want out of life, but you're showing up because you have to. Or you, yeah. you think you have to anyway. I mean, in a lot of cases, you do have to. You got responsibilities, and you don't necessarily have another ship to jump to. So that, to me, always felt more like selling out. But there's a lot to it. It's not so easy to just up and quit your job. It's a very, very That's bold true. move. Very bold yeah. move. And But I always enjoy stories of success that involve making those tough decisions where it's like, this is the day. This is the day that I, I do the thing that I don't want to do, but I know I have to do, you know, well, all those things we talked about last week. Yeah. I was just going to say, it just seems like it's a long way to, you know, spend a decade of hating your fucking job. You know what I mean? Oh my God. But you, and you, and you lose more than 10 years of your life because oh, of the sure. stress on top of it. Uh huh. Well, Chris, uh, you did make, I think, a pretty bold decision last week. And <laughs> mid-show, you shut off your Facebook, and I haven't seen you come back since. So you've had a full week without Facebook. Mm -hmm. Do you have any reports yet? Too early to decide? Or has it gone gone one way or the other uh, quite noticeably? I haven't missed it a single time. I uh, And I was on it a lot. I was spending a lot of time on Facebook. It was, it was hurting my work productivity. I think it was hurting my social... Uh, developments i don't know uh i wish i could just act i wish i could deactivate messenger honestly i wish i could just take it all off right now <laughs> oh, you, I, uh, oh, you can't deactivate Messenger, or well, you just don't I just want have to. too many yeah i just have too many like one of my main uh, sources <laughs> for, of for contacts sure. right now for people. Well, just, yeah. yeah i uh learned something really interesting today and it, like a kind of bummer about just how COVID has affected this world I made an appointment to see a therapist because I, I need to sort some things out in my brain pan a little bit. Mm -hmm. I decided to 
I haven't talked to someone because I just I'm not sure which way direction to take some of these things that I'm, I'm encountering right now. And yeah, so I, <laughs> I made an appointment with my doctor and uh, he was like, good news, bad news. <laughs> good news. I can get you. I can get you into the therapist. Bad news. Uh, it's a minimum of six weeks. Yeah. <laughs> you can see anyone. And I was like, wow. OK, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, Hopefully they're bumping basics. people who put suicidal tendencies on well, that that's, questionnaire that's, to the see, front of the line. Have you have you exactly. ha, have you thought about one of those um, like online? Yeah, I actually things? registered at better better dot com. But it's a lot of those aren't thing, covered like, by insurance, though. Is the no, problem. that's the thing. So and, that, and that's what I was thinking about. Like, I, yes, I need some help right now. But there are people in crisis that really need help. Yeah. And. Now they have to wait six weeks. Like if I was in crisis, I don't know how I would have reacted to that. And you know what you do? It would be like a run. final straw for some people for sure. You're just yeah, hearing that. I couldn't believe it. He was like, he's like, I'm really sorry. He's like, COVID has fucked everything. The doctor was like, COVID made everything terrible for this. Everyone needs therapy and we're short staffed and nobody yeah. can get in anywhere. Not surprising. Like, Fuck. So but I'm, I'm really to fortunate learn. to be in a position where I have some income and I can, you know, pay for this. Mm -hmm. It's going to be 400 bucks for a month on this thing, but I'm going to check it out. Yeah. You know, you should do is uh pack up a bag and then come over here <laughs> let us there oh, let us therapy you <laughs> let us therapy all over you yeah. <laughs> well i'm interested to hear how that goes i've heard good things about that company um mm. but i you know i have only through reputation i've just recommended it to some people who have had the same problem as you finding someone and even if they do find someone you know getting a good therapist i don't have experience with this, but I have a lot of people that I know that I uh, have counselors and therapists in their life. It's an interesting relationship and it's a, a very important relationship and you can't just go see anybody. You got to find somebody that uh, that's a good fit and you know, you're sharing just about everything with them and it's a very intimate, strangely intimate relationship. And your first experience could be terrible. Your second experience could be terrible. And then you got to find, you kind of got to dial it in. That's a luxury True. that we don't have right now either. Uh, and not just yeah. because of availability, but because of cost. And, you know, why Why shouldn't, if someone's got like some sort of licensed counseling or therapeutic uh, paperwork, why shouldn't that somehow, the, the whole health insurance thing is bullshit anyway. We know that. I mean, we didn't talk ad nauseum about that. But <laughs> like, do we want people snapping? Or do we want people, you know, not snapping? Do we want people fully yeah. functioning and putting putting into the system, if you will? Or do we want them not being able to function in this bullshit world that you assholes have set up? It's like, yeah. uh, it goes back to what I was talking about with Facebook last week, where it's like, you know, look, we've all agreed to go through these hoops. Just give us a little bit of what we want <laughs> and what we need yeah. out of this. You're going to take advantage of all you want anyway, but just cut a little back. Uh, you know, nothing to him. But <clears throat> I hope it goes well for you, and I hope you, right off the bat, you get somebody. Had you seen, uh, had you done therapy before, Chris? Is that something new for you? Mm, not, not since I was in my, like, early 20s. That was a very personal question I just asked. So, you, I'm sorry, no, it's okay. but, yeah, uh, like we don't talk about personal stuff. On I know, podcast, but you so. never know. For some reason, 20s, which so direction you wipe is slightly less intimate as <laughs> a question about therapy to me. And it's like a, certainly less heavy, but um, God, I, I heard a front have to you? back reference uh, somewhere. I wish I... I'm sorry. No, I, I haven't, no. Um, not, not outside of just like counselors that were recommended to me after my after Jason committed suicide but oh. that's my what, what only experience with it I found a bunch of uh, have you done therapy uh, yeah cemetery uh, well uh, funeral things I found Jason's it's like oh shit <laughs> like, like, clean, like the so. funeral yeah the like the little greeting thing mm. wow yeah. I wouldn't <laughs> I would like to see that I haven't seen I, I wouldn't have seen that since 91 was it in 91 right. or 90? I always kind of got confused uh -huh. on exactly when it was. 91, I think. It was 91. Uh, interesting. It's just a small little card and has little wheat things on it. Yeah, I can almost picture it. Uh, John Mark, Cheers. you said you've done uh, therapy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good good success with it? Uh, I, I guess so. Um, yeah. I, you know, I felt 
like the guy I was talking to was like, you know, uh, a good dude and, you know, had my best interests, you know, in mind. And he, you know, I, I, you know, thinking back on it, like, you know, sometimes you, you don't necessarily think, you know, when you're going through it, like, is this really helping me? You know what I mean? But it like, yeah. in hindsight, you're like, Oh yeah, I, th- I think it probably did. And then, you know, some years later, um, when some different life circumstances happened, I was like, should I, should I talk to somebody right now? I don't know. Maybe I should just to kind of get the lay of the land, you know, am I handling all this? Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just to kind of like, and take um, stock of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and he was like, yeah, you're doing great, man. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> you know, he's like, no, you're doing everything you need to do. It sounds like you, you know, got the, got it figured out. And it seems like 400 you're doing good. bucks. And I was and like, see you next month. Um, he, he was on a sliding scale, so it was all, and he took insurance too, so I didn't really have to pay yeah. all that much. So yeah. it was, it was like a copay or something, I think. So I think, um, hopefully we're on the precipice of changing how this is all done because it's a growing, it's a growing need and maybe people need it more. Maybe people are, are, um, just waking up to the idea of it or feeling safe enough to even talk about it. You know, uh, sort of like being gay <laughs> when people would say, uh, oh, if being gay is a real thing and it's always been around, you know, the the true naysayers say shit like, well, why are all of a sudden gay people everywhere? It's like they've been around, but they for a while. <laughs> in some cases it was illegal for them to even say they were gay, let alone be out and about. And now that they can. Yeah, you're going to notice more of them. I feel like there's a similar thing concerning like just the freedom to talk about mental health in a way that's not immediately going to have people talking, oh, there goes crazy Carol. You know, she's seeing a shrink. You know, that whole thing. That That's the kind of talk that I heard growing up. That started mm-hmm. changing about, I don't know, 20 years ago, and it's really made a change in the last uh, 10 years or so. I feel like people are waking up to the idea that these aren't shameful things, and uh, to the contrary, you know, this, these are things that are admirable when, when people want to improve themselves. So how could it be anything other than admirable if people – acknowledge that they need a little help and they can ask for help that's that's a that's a bullshit premise that a lot of people have swallowed uh, especially in this country like i said swallowed too many l's in my swallow no but uh anyway yeah i i assumed i've i've never heard anyone quit facebook and say oh my god i, I was gone for two days because i just i wasn't happy i i, I missed it so much it was i've never heard that I'm sure it exists, but everybody I know that's quit Facebook is like, honestly, I don't fucking think about it. it. It's not even so much as like, holy shit, my life is so much better. It's just I don't think about it. And if you don't think about it, then your life is better because you're missing out on mostly, as we discussed, useless, uh, arbitrary, or in some cases, some pretty negative shit. And yeah, if, the only if thing some... that's been tough is, sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. Podcast stuff. I couldn't, you know, get the names for people that commented today. I was like, fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like one of the first times to speak, I was like, "Oh shit!" And an easy don't get fix. me wrong, I can go get. I and... think about thirty times on my phone. I opened Facebook in the last week to that screen where it's like log back in. Yeah, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, I'm not doing this anymore." Yeah, it's a habit. <laughs> it's just like like wrote. wrote it is like, a bad habit. We just yeah. kind of do it, you know. We just pick up our phones <laughs> and our thumbs just kind of start doing a thing, and it usually goes to you know Facebook, Twitter, or you know whatever dating apps or email, whatever it goes to. It just kind of I don't know. We just don't even think about it half the time. It's like, well, I'm sitting here at a stoplight. Yeah, that will be, uh, but it's a good thing that it's logged out completely because, well, you, I guess it would be because you actually deactivated it, but. Yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, interesting. I'm curious to see how this journey goes. And who knows? Maybe you can wean off it enough to where you can come back to it or you'll never be on I, it I plan, again ever. No, I plan on. I do plan on coming back to it. I just, uh, I'm just reassessing what's important in my life right now and yeah. really taking a moment to address those things. And it feels really fucking good and a little scary at the same time. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. You know, and just, well, I got I'm, sh- I'm oversharing here. I really apologize. I'm like, like we ever do that on this podcast, but I found I wasn't living a life that was really indicative of the man I want to be hmm. uh, overall. And I'm just trying to make some changes largely just, because of Facebook. No, that was just part of it. Uh, sure. Just a part of it. Okay. Just a part of it. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know? there's no such thing as oversharing. I don't want to over ask. 
uh, on the show. So, you know, it's kind of going to be up to you to, to go into any more details if you want. But yeah, that's always going to be an option. There is a therapeutic aspect. This is not therapy, of course, but there is a therapeutic aspect to just getting shit off your chest sometimes. And sometimes you just need to sit with shit yourself and uh, to do some planning. Nothing wrong with that either. Facebook Mm -hmm. could be actually a really bad thing, you know, especially if you, uh, you know, you say you're dating a chick and that's why I never really dated anybody on Facebook or whatnot and try to stay away from and steer from it. Uh, it's because like you get jealous, you know, you start reading the other comments and then you just get all fucked up in your own head over probably nothing. Mm. You know, it's, it's stupid, man. Yeah. Jealousy is probably a big problem with social media in general. Well, it's uh, so open. You know what I mean? Anybody could just peek in there and see whatever I had. I had ex-girlfriends stalk me off, uh, Facebook and I don't yeah. even, I do yeah, keep it open publicly, that. but I don't keep, I don't, I, I got 30 or 40 people that, have friend requested me, but I, you know, I don't know him personally, so I don't have him on there. Yeah. Um, but I, it's, mine's pretty open. <laughs> yeah. To the public, but, yeah. You know, the one reason why I never went into counseling was the fact that I was always in, in thought of like how doctors talk because doctors always talk to the other doctors about patients or the doctor will talk about patients to other patients. Hmm. So, I'm afraid that uh, someone will share your secret shit. Uh, it's either that or make a book about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, found, I found my therapy. At yeah, the that's Joe that's bar. completely <laughs> illegal for them to do that, though. It so. is. It is. Yeah, you can't say that it doesn't well, they happen. Could, they just couldn't but... name you, right? Yeah, you just don't have to use your name. <laughs> you got you to hear what this guy's story was. And I'm sure in broad strokes there is a lot of, well, I don't know about a lot. You know, there, it's a pretty ethical. When I was even working at that apothecary for a little while, I, I didn't have to go through any kind of like HIPAA training or anything, but I got the rundown and, you know, I was there witnessing how people talk and there are vague conversations, but it's not gossipy at all. It's, it's more about putting brain power on a thing. And they're like, here's a situation here. And I'm, you know, I was like, I don't, you know, what's your opinion? And I I did see some of that, but it's very vague and no names, no specifics, just like very vague conversations. And but uh, your point is is valid, and that probably keeps a lot of people away. Even just telling one person is mm-hmm. a it's a hard thing for a lot of people to do. For sure, uh, that's I think why I I took psychology when I was in school, mm-hmm. just to you know kind of get a better grip on what's going on in my brain, and it 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 helped me. No, you know, I was just hoping you say it, it fucked me up. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I was doing the psychological I just, stuff I, I in class. I talked to myself. I me. made everything all right. <laughs> Every time a bell rings, my mouth waters. <laughs> exactly. Can't remember where I was last night, but I feel good about it. Um, all right. I got a couple pieces of news, and then I want to keep an eye on the clock. Chris has the kid tonight. <coughs> Excuse me. Chris has the kid tonight, so we need to be out of here by 8 o'clock. And I got a little game for y'all to play too. And we have, we don't, we won't be doing, we did get a couple of submissions for the audience's pick for most underrated album. But since we're a little under the gun tonight, well, not under the gun, but we won't have as much time as usual. And I believe we're going to have to miss next week because I've got a magazine and a Star Wars burlesque show to put on all in two weeks. So that's going to be. Yeah. That's going to be a doings. I got enough. Uh, and you got to help me move. <laughs> yeah, I got to help Lyle move. It's going to be a, it's going to be a doings. Um, yeah. So I think we'll we'll give you guys two more weeks, and we'll we'll see what you come up with. So keep sending those emails, suggestions for albums, and give us a good long description. Well, by long, I mean you know paragraph or two at the most, but something that's heartfelt and you know really paint the pitch for us. You can send that to RadarStationArt at gmail.com or Christopher.Bazaar at gmail.com. It'll all get to us. Um, but before we get to my little game, which does tie in to my burlesque show, because I never miss a moment to snake oil salesman, y'all. Uh, here's a cute little palate cleanser. Even though we haven't really gotten too dark. Well, we got a little heavy, briefly. But uh, this is a group of kids out of New Hampshire, a middle school to be precise, they launched in 2018, they launched this little mini sailboat about five feet long, uh, off the Eastern U S coast. I think they ended up launching it from Boston, but 
They dubbed the tiny vessel the Rye Riptides, and on board were a bunch of messages the students had written to whomever may discover them, some drawings, little pieces of art, and some random keepsakes. Uh, and the boat was equipped with GPS, and the students were able to follow it for the first several days after they shoved it off and waved goodbye. But the signal started getting pretty spotty after about a month or two. And about 10 months into it, it kind of stopped pinging regularly. But, and they lost track of it somewhere out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. But on January 30th, just a couple months back, the little boat pinged from a, a small inhabited island off the coast of Norway. And it seemed to be fairly well grounded in that area and maybe even stuck. So the team of kids and teachers took to the interwebs and they put a call out to anyone in the area that could access that island. Now, it wasn't too far off the coast and check for the boat. And eventually that got the attention of a little Norwegian family who lived so close to that island uh, that they could see it from their home. So they loaded up the fam in their little dinghy and headed out for the island. And that was early February. And after circling almost the entirety of the island, about to give up, sure enough, there was the rye riptides, or what was left of it anyway. The the little guy had taken quite a beating to get from the U.S. to Norway, as you can imagine. But uh, and they were worried about you know the contents inside, but. As it turns out, <laughs> well, I'm just going to read the rest right off of NPR.com here. The boat had been demasted and the hull and keel were no longer attached. The majority of the deck with the cargo hold embedded was intact and sealed. After cleaning off barnacles that had grown on the boat during its voyage, the family brought it home. And a kid from that Norwegian family brought the boat to his school the next day. And it says where students opened the cargo hatch to find the messages and gifts that the middle schoolers had deposited nearly two years before. The grand opening was filmed by a national television crew and shared across social media. And uh, the boys' viral voyage is also personal for those involved. It says, after 462 days, 8,300 miles of traveling across the Atlantic Ocean, the deck and cargo hold were the only remaining pieces of the boat. So essentially, all that survived was... <laughs> the box of messages. I'm going to send you guys uh, a little photo of the little boat that could. And uh, it's got a little map there, too, showing its incredible fucking voyage. And you can see how it it got out oh, wow. all the way under Greenland. And then it kind of backtracked, like the, the winds pushed it back. But then it found its way. Yeah. It zigzagged all the way up to Iceland and then made basically a straight line over Ireland and the U.K. and landed in... Uh, yeah, essentially northern Norway. It's like a drunk, drunk it's like a drunk Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. Isn't it interesting the patterns there? It just goes so straight. Although a lot of that might be because it only pinged a couple of times, so maybe they just don't know. Uh, that's probably more to do with it. But that's incredible that you can put a little five foot boat with very little protection and just send it off into the wild blue yonder, and it uh, it made its way there with all its little treasures inside. I thought that was a fun story. And one, uh, another treasure story that's a little more irritating. I got this off of uh, Coast to Coast AM and in, in the interest of time, I'm just going to read it straight off. This is kind of bizarre and something I hadn't heard of before. A pair of Pennsylvania treasure hunters have scored a major victory in their longstanding legal battle with the FBI over a mysterious dig for a legendary hoard of lost Civil War gold. The latest development in the highly contentious case reportedly came about this week with, when a federal judge sided with Dennis and Ken Parada in their quest to receive files about the event from the Justice Department. At the heart of the matter is a 2018 expedition that unfolded in a Pennsylvania state forest wherein the FBI went looking for the cache of gold bars that vanished during the Civil War. Having led the federal government to the spot where they believe the gold was located before being squeezed out of the search, the Paradas have expressed considerable skepticism over the FBI's claim that the dig turned up nothing. As such, for the last four years, they have been on a different kind of treasure hunt in the form of a series of lawsuits looking to have their doubts confirmed and, if possible, receive a share of the riches that they assert were spirited away from the area under a cloak of secrecy by no one 
other than the FB danged eye. <laughs> and there's some more details to the story, but we will see how that shapes out. But what a perfectly American tale. Now, what I'm curious about, and I didn't say this in the story, is how the how the government got involved at all. I'm guessing it might have been a question of land. Like, who owns this land? How do you get jurisdiction? That comes up a lot in treasure hunting. You know, who actually can sign off on this bit of permish? <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. But very interesting. And I thought it was hilarious that it, it could, this would make a great, like, little crime sort of mini documentary series. The FBI stealing a treasure hunt away from some treasure hunters. I would watch that shit. Um, no. One of the main reasons why, like, uh, the Black Sea, I believe, mm -hmm. <clears throat> they found uh, some, like, 300 villages all underwater, and um, they won't let anybody go down there um, because of that. If you did find any kind of treasures like that, the the uh, government would actually incarcerate you and take away your treasures. Because well, it's, it's really interesting. The whole The whole idea of who owns what actually just came up on a little story that I meant to bring last week. I'm going to pull that up and just read this little snippet. You, you guys remember I was talking about that girl on TikTok that was just, her whole shtick was just watching and following the these plane tracking apps. Mm -hmm. And I think I might have mentioned that she was following some of the stuff that was going on up, you know, involving Russian planes and a lot of heightened activity in uh, above Alaska on in the Arctic. And it got me thinking, well, who actually owns the Arctic? Well, as it turns out, most of it is quite literally no man's land. But this is intriguing. I found this on Slate.com. Uh, it says, no one owns the North Pole, but every country with a border on the Arctic Ocean claims some of its waters. Because the North Pole is covered by an ice shelf and isn't actually land, it's governed by the law of the sea. <laughs> A 1982 UN treaty signed by more than 150 countries. Uh, the, the agreement gives each nation control of the area up to 200 nautical miles of its coast. So everyone with so much as a shoreline in the Arctic gets some Arctic waters and a little bit of the shore and whatever natural resources might lie beneath them. And what's key about that is this is not only a very useful military strategic location, of course, but 30% of the world's natural gas and 11% of the world's fossil fuel that has not yet been tapped is up there under the Arctic ice. Oh. I didn't know that until I read this. Uh, so I thought that was f fucking fascinating. First of all, that's a very key, for a lot of reasons, chunk of quote unquote land that no nobody really owns. And it seems like Russia... You know, Russia's been trying to flex its cock across the sea and into the Arctic for a long time, and we've known about this. We've known about these bases that they have. If not full-on bases, they have some sort of facilities set up uh, in sort of uh, icy Area 51-type mini bases along some of the shores and even further inland on the actual ice bed. And most of these have been thought to be dormant, like they were Cold War-era things that we're like, maybe this will be where we launch some missiles from. Maybe not. No one really knows because they haven't really been investigated. Uh, but now it seems like they, but the, the question is, well, who polices an overreaching of what someone is doing? That's why we need uh, world police, Team America. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, they would be the world police, but this could get messy. Uh, anyway, that account is Lens of Psy, Lens of SI. Um, yeah, I'm not saying it's true or not, but there's a big rumor that uh, people believe that uh, Hitler escaped off to the Antarctic. Uh, oh, and to get where away where from hasn't it. he gone? You know, if if Hitler well, no, escaped, like supposed to be a base there that the he actually went to supposedly. Mm -hmm. Well, if Hitler did escape, and I don't think he did, but if he, if he did, yeah. you remember when we long time ago we did a, a story on this, and I looked into all the little theories. There are some pretty fucking crazy stories about uh, in South, I think it was Brazil or it was somewhere in South America that he was thought. And it was just like the locals, you know, local legends, they, sure. once they're born, they, they just kind of keep getting passed down. So this that doesn't mean anything, but there are some pretty amazing local stories where people can like take you to this one grave and everyone says, yeah, that's Hitler. That's where Hitler was buried. And 
And there's no question. The other thing is there are there were a lot of Nazis that fled to South America. There, there are well-known pockets of them. So that's real. That's not conspiracy theory. The question is, you know, what did Hitler fake his own death and uh, scoochy scoochy out the door? Well, that wouldn't be a crazy thing to do. You know, we're not talking the craziest theory in the world to believe. But ultimately, they're like so many, even the good, interesting conspiracy theories. There were too many dead ends, too many untied knots, if you will, <laughs> that it just I couldn't get behind it. But it was a fun one. To, those were the fun kind of conspiracy theories. And like, uh, you know, saying that Putin is the secret policeman of the world who's actually saving the world by blowing up children and sleeping women uh, in Ukraine right now. And what they're saying is that he's actually ridding the world of their secret bio labs. Uh, <laughs> people will just, they'll do anything except believe what the, and what's funny about that theory, even Putin isn't spouting that. He's not even saying that. He's, he's telling, he's like, well, no, we want to take this fucking shit back. This is our land. He'll, he'll, he'll say some shit about the Nazis being there, you know, like, oh, we're trying to get rid of these neo-Nazis, but yeah, bunch of horseshit. Conspiracy theories aren't fun anymore. I think I'm going to hold it there for now, let you guys weigh in on what you want and uh, keeping an eye on the clock to get to our game. Uh, turn it over to you. Anything you guys want to bring? And if it's nothing, busy. I got plenty. <laughs> I got one. Well, I'll just I'll do one more. John Mark, did you have anything? I don't have anything in particular. No. <laughs> I, by the way, when I was listening back to the <laughs> this episode, there there was all it wasn't in the, in the same episode, but there was one uh, clip recently where John Mark was like, uh, "Yeah, I really haven't had time to throw anything together." And then he just <laughs> the next episode was like. Yeah, I logged like 200 hours of Elden Ring. <laughs> it's like, well, you look at you. You don't have to bring stories. You guys never well, have to it, bring stories. It's just a matter of like finding something that I feel like is <laughs> I'm just like, busting a, your chops. appropriate or not going to be on weird news quiz or Yeah. I just send so, them to Chris. I don't know. My problem I have is, is that I see shit like on whatever sources that I, you know, like see stories and stuff and I'm like I don't know. I just have this thing that I just kind of assume that everybody's seen everything already, but it's like, I think it works pretty that... well with how we've been doing it. Honestly, I mean, can, cause you guys can always weigh in on the shit that I bring and maybe it'll yeah. trigger something. You vastly, else over, like... you vastly overestimate Ron's uh, news watch ability too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, I've stepped it up a little bit, but that's why I start. If I got like some things that I think might pop up on weird Triv. I'll send Chris out just a, a quick little recap of what I got. And I don't think there have been any, uh, maybe there's one or two in the last several months that yeah, it's not been bad at all. conflicts, but it's been, it's amazing how well that's worked out. And, but it, what's also amazing is that, okay, now I'm looking into shit more, you know, for content and we've sort of s steered the show toward a mostly news story based thing instead of soup to showers and longer topics. I'm still not seeing any of these fucking stories. So yeah, mm -hmm. Chris does some good digging, at least uh, far away from my bookmarks. But I got one more story I've been meaning to bring, then we'll get on to my game. The headline <laughs> will grab you and tells the story, but there are more details. Uh, dude got 90 COVID vaccines for cash. 90. Oh, no. This is such a modern wow. crime. So 60-year-old dude in Germany made it known to anti-vaxxers that he would take their identity and their vax cards to go get the vaccine for a price. And he did this 66 times, but, uh, you know, because some of them were the second, uh, you know, he did this for 66 people, but some of them were second doses. So they estimate that he's closer to a hundred total injections. And, but the interesting thing is he seems fine. <laughs> he hasn't got COVID as far as, as far as I've seen. This really kind of industry it illustrates how safe the vaccine actually can be. Uh, obviously sure. not for That's everybody, and you can always have. Yeah. <laughs> but he got caught when he went to the same guy uh, two days in a row, so he got a little sloppy. But good lord, they should pay him at this point to be studied, or at least if there's a well, I guess there's a crime. There are crimes here, so they. Sh in my opinion, <laughs> you guys weigh in if you want. In my opinion, they should waive the crime elements from his perspective, not necessarily the people that paid him. If they got those IDs, yeah, go after those guys for, uh, you know, forging their vaccine shit. I say waive this dude's crime 
in in trade for just studying him over the next several well, years. Once he pops or explodes from the, you know too many COVID <laughs> vaccines, they'll study his body. I'm sure. Ninety COVID vaccines. Wow. I be wonder if you got COVID on top of that. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like, oh fuck. <laughs> well, what are you gonna do? And then died. Yeah. yeah. Although, what could you say? What did that mean? Um, I don't know what that means. I, I didn't see anybody. Scientists is like they're, they're all shrugging. Like we, we. Well, of course we don't know what this would fucking do. Jesus. Um, but that's why they should yeah waive his crimes if he agrees to be a lab rat. I think that's fair. We need to study. They're like, what's this guy a fucking junkie? It's just like the mm-hmm. track marks on his. <laughs> he has to be black and blue all over. Yeah. Because also, that's over. Like, yeah, go ahead. Did you all get sick as fuck? With I got sick both times. I got that vaccine. Uh, I didn't uh, have any reaction sick. except a sore arm. Sick. Man, did you say that again, Lyle? Up. What was your reaction? I said I got severely sick after the second one. It took me like four days to break my funk. I couldn't focus on anything. Did you get at all? Uh, which one did you get? The Pfizer. The Pfizer. Um, yeah, John Mark. What about you? It seemed like you were just a little sluggish. I... Yeah, I didn't, nothing, like, it wasn't really anything bad. It was just like, oh, I'm going to just kind of lay on the couch today kind of deal. You know, I wasn't, didn't really you get. into it? Yeah, I did. Did you take, my, you took like, Moderna, you know, right? Yeah, and I had, what, three of those? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Chris, you took Moderna. I took Pfizer, I think, right, Chris? Uh, I took Moderna, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, there goes my theory. I for some reason, I was hearing that more people seem to have that second shot blues, if you will, from Moderna than Pfizer. But it seems to be about across the board, not just here, but I've been asking around lately, too. But the other thing about me is I did not follow the U.S. timeline at all. I followed what other countries were doing, not on purpose. You know, I talked about it just like I just slacked off getting that second shot. And then I was like, you know, maybe I won't even bother getting that second shot. I'm healthy. I'm fine. And it seems like this thing's weaning back. But then once the that that was right before Delta hit, hit I think, or maybe we, we started getting hints that another wave was coming. Something changed my mind. And I was like, no, I'm going to go get that fucking shot. Or maybe that's when people I knew started dying from it. But so I was, I think, five months apart. And Canada, a lot of places in Canada were now recommending four months apart. And in Britain, they were starting to space them apart a little bit further. And so that might have had something to do with it. Maybe it had more time to sort of, you know, I don't know, change in my system. And But I'm still, I won't be eligible to get a, uh, a topper offer, if you will, until I think June, mid-June. Because I, I just, that's how late I got my... It basically was a booster, I guess, by the way this thing seems to have worked. But any old who, well, let's get on. <laughs> I to got my... a funny one. Oh yeah, go ahead. I just, <clears throat> it's kind of funny. Um, so uh, apparently, a uh, professor has thinking they've found an uh, explanation for strange long neck sea monsters out there that was recorded in history. You know, like. Like Nessie. Plesiosaurus. <laughs> Plesiosaurus, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you wait. Plesiosaurus. This story. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, this is funny. Uh, this is just reading straight off of it. I just literally just, just found it, and I think it's just fucking hilarious. This specific uh, professor, he goes, uh, yeah, that's right. He claimed that most tentacle and alien-esque uh, appendages emerging from the water were more likely associated with um, whale penises. What? How, how so? Yes. Whale penises. <laughs> they, I did they, hear it. I'm just... <laughs> whale penises. <laughs> Apparently, they like to swim on their backs. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, but, don't, uh, I don't get it. What? Like, no, they evolved is... into heads? No, not at all. Um, they were mistaken. So like oh, they were seeing oh, penises, but they thought they were seeing long neck sea monsters, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which would be kind of a sea monster. I got it. Oh, That's my. fucking hilarious. Isn't the Cock Ness monster. Mm-hmm. Cock Ness monster coming to get you. That's a Watch t-shirt out. waiting to happen. Oh man, it's not good. It's not good. much it's more to it, but it's just funny. I just, it's a short article. <laughs> What'd you it's say, not- Chris? That's not going to get much better than Cockness Monster. <laughs> Does that make you more fair, afraid of the ocean, though? 
No, and it's I mean, just male penises out there instead of monsters. Does this make it better, <laughs> giant penises? Yeah, yeah. I think I'm less afraid of giant dicks <laughs> and more afraid of fish. You shouldn't shrug at a wheel penis, man. They're you don't know what they will do to you, though. Yeah, they fuck you up. I'm sure. <laughs> I do think I would take my chances with a giant dick coming at me than a mouth because the dick, the. Now we joke that the dick has a mind of its own, but it doesn't really. the The mouth is so close to the brain <laughs> that it can do more things, piloted by the brain. The dick only has one or two tricks, uh, if you're lucky. Uh, the mouth, yeah, that can tear into you, chompy well, chomp, maybe even swallow. I know they're not the same because I think uh, dolphins are mammals, uh, uh, whales are mammals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so very different. <laughs> My curiosity is, would a whale try to fuck you like a dolphin would? Yeah, dolphins straight up. Uh, they rape. They, they rape. They do fucking molest human beings all the time. Haven't heard of stories of whales doing that. I, I feel like dolphins are way more nimble and more sure. our size. <clears throat> Who knows? Maybe a whale is trying. When the, we just think it's majestic as fuck, and we're like, it's so beautiful. Look how it bumped up against our boat. No, he's just trying to get its giant cock into you, but he can't steer the bus. Uh, we can't know. Can't <laughs> Nature know. probably isn't nearly as majestic as we'd like to think it is. But mm. uh, the whale, you know, the whale penis. How long is a whale penis, Lyle? Oh, my Get God. Get that in front of you? No, I don't. Right. If I did, it would be huge. Well, we Size got, we got enough bus. time. I'm going to do a quick... How long is whale penis? <laughs> After my search collection. The blue yeah. whale has the largest penis in the animal kingdom. It is con I fucking love no. technology and how we use it. It is commonly cited as having an average penis size of eight feet. Oh, my. Oh my. That is a tripler. Crippler. You want to give Idiot. us a little trip, 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 triple, cripple? No. Get it triple, triple, <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Get it warmed up for tonight. Well, yeah. let's move on to my game here. As I did mention, we have a Star Wars burlesque show coming up on May 6th here in Wenatchee at the Riverside Theater. And tickets are on sale now. You can get them at uh, theradardames.eventbrite.com or look us up on Facebook. You can find our links. And you want to get those because we, we've sold out every show so far. And you don't want to miss out on this one. If you're going to be in the area, or if you're looking for a reason to travel to Old Wenatch, come see the Ronster. Uh, this will be quite an evening. Uh, it's going to be hosted by me, Ron Solo. <laughs> I'm going to try to come up with a super cheap B-movie cardboard or foam board Millennium Falcon uh, cockpit to do my narration bits in. But I bet that won't come together <laughs> in time because I do have a 40-page magazine to put out at the same time. But I thought... In celebration of that, we would do a little round of elimination because I just came across a list, and I thought maybe we did this at one point, but I went back, and as far as I could see, we haven't done this exact list from Star Wars, and this is Ranker's list of the all-time most popular Star Wars characters. Now, I saw a whole bunch of lists when I searched for this, uh, to sort of cross-reference, and they're all over the map. But the reason I stuck with this one is because this is not a group of experts or a group of, you know, it's not like this is what Rolling Stone, they had their own list. Uh, Esquire had their own list. But it was just people there working, trying to come up with what they thought were the best overall characters. I wanted a, a list of the most popular, like these are the characters that we love. I got to say, um, for the most part, the list doesn't surprise, but there are, this, this list was compiled in late 2021. So it does include a, a few of the, the new franchise characters, not many, but keep that in mind. And this seems to only cover movies and TV shows, but it does cover some of the animations. I don't think that we're getting all the way into like comics and characters that only popped up in some of the books or anything. This seems to be like all something you all would have watched. We're going to do the top 25 here. All right. Do you remember who won the last one? I can't remember who won the last one. It was me. I thought it was. Well, we're going to give you top billing again. You're going to go first. Then we will end with, or we'll go, let's put John Mark in the middle. Cause I feel like he's at the caboose a lot. And then we'll end 
with Lyle taking it up the old Death Star shoot. So you want the most popular, as voted by Ranker. There were over almost 30,000 votes by the people. Chris, who do you think is the all-time most popular Star Wars character? This is tough because uh, I, you know, you want to go right for like the main character. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I want to go a little more obscure. I mean, le- at least until recently, I think Boba Fett is a very popular character. Are you sure it's not Jar Jar Binks? <laughs> no, easy, easy. Don't, don't wait your turn. <laughs> so I'm going to go with Boba Fett off the bat, even though I know okay. he's not a main character. I think he's like... He's in, he's been a low key, very popular character in Star Wars for a long time, and now high key. <laughs> I don't know. I, his back have Jet. Yeah, he's one of the coolest characters I think in the Star Wars franchise, and I was surprised with how low he was down on the list. Not too bad though. I mean, he, he's number sixteen, gotcha. but uh, mm-hmm. that gives you ten points right off the bat. I did expect him to be higher up, but I I think if you would have done this list ten years ago, he would have been higher up. Now there's so mm-hmm. many new newer franchise or new characters and i think a lot of people that might have shifted it but some of these characters that go all the way back to the ones that we grew up with they they come back or you see them in the prequels and so they they i don't know they played around with it a little bit more than maybe some of those classic boba fett-esque characters until quite Mm -hmm. recently when he got his own show which i have not heard good things about but um but that's i loved it i loved it the the boba fett show Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. Um, John Mark, what say you? Well, man, there's a whole bunch of choices that could be like the most popular, but I'm going to have to go with uh, Darth Vader. Darth mm-hmm. Vader. Interesting Everybody choice. Bad guy. And a good choice because that is number one. One, one. Nice. Well, I guess one doesn't deserve that. 25 <laughs> points, motherfucker. That sounded like one, like a Star Wars <laughs> droid malfunctioning over there. <laughs> All right, how much for the blue one? All right, well, that uh, is exciting, but don't fret, guys, because there are shit tons of points in that top ten, especially in the top five, of course. Uh, Lyle, I don't know why I put an E down for your name. I'll change that to an L. And uh, what are you going to go with? Ooh, it's a tough one. Um, I'm. <laughs> do I want to? I think I might. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Han Solo. Yeah. Do you follow your heart, or do you? Uh, there's a few ways you can go here. Han Solo is a good guess. I would have put him a little higher up myself, uh, but he is at number five, which gets you 21 points. So that's nice. a pretty good start. All right, Chris, back to you. Okay, uh, I'm basically living for the release of Obi-Wan Kenobi at the end of May, so I'm going to go with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi was a good one to go be with. It was number deuce at 24. Right. Yeah, really? that surprised me. Um, I I wonder how much of that is based on the classic Alec Guinness Obi-Wan or the uh, Ewan McGregor. Uh, I think it's Ewan McGregor, I think it's, honestly. Or Ewan. Me too, Ewan. yeah. Me too. He's a great Obi Wan. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I can't wait for the show. I'm and really they've done some fun things with this character over those later movies too. All right, well that jumps you up to thirty four and in the lead currently. So looking good, John Mark. Back to ye. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with Princess Leia. Mm. Mm-hmm. Leia Princess Canada. Leia, sadly. Almost out of the top 10, but still that's a, crazy. Still a good guess. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people love Princess Leia. And again, I think you have to think if this list was done 15 years ago, you would definitely see her further up in the top five. You'd have to. But uh, mm-hmm. there's so many n- new versions of these characters and side stories now that I think fed into this to some degree. But still a good guess. And that was 16. So that brings you up to. 41. And Lyle, you are in. Easy. How about this one? Use the force. <laughs> <laughs> Would you want my opinion here? <laughs> that was really fun. Uh, no, you see. No. Use the force. There you go. That's a little more. That's a little better. Anyway, I'm going to go with Mr. Yoda. Good guess. It's number three. 
Number three. So you guys are uh, you guys are doing pretty good. Number uh, at the top five. We only got one left in top five. And let's see, Yoda was worth twenty three, which takes you up to forty four. You are currently in the lead. All right, Chris, you can smash that right now if you guess number four. I'm gonna guess my favorite villain, uh, which is Darth Maul. Darth Maul, I think, should be a little higher on the list, but he gets some love. He's number 13, which is worth 13. Yeah, Darth Maul is a badass character. I always thought that it was kind of a shame that he got cut in half so quickly. <laughs> well, you don't – okay, well, here's the thing. He survives that, and we're going to see more of him. We have seen more of him. <laughs> so stupid. Boilers. I know. Well, it's really great. Someone the way stitched they, him mean, together? Did you, did you watch it, John Mark? Because, no, he, he, he ends up in a garbage choot, and he – from no, like, I... sheer hatred, he keeps his insides with the force, like, inside of him, and he rebuilds his body, like, into giant spider legs. <laughs> and he loses his mind and somebody comes and rescues him and he mounts like a he mounts a comeback and you see obi-wan in the uh in the animated series have a old man fight with him and then one stroke totally takes him down and then like gently lowers him to the ground in this beautiful moon rising scene on tatooine it was fucking amazing it was like that sounds so see so like you just made it up that is the craziest <laughs> story to happen i know that i what when did that happen what uh movie did that it happen happens in? It, it happens in the, the animated, yeah, the animated <laughs> okay. show, which is what they're pulling all this new shit from. Like I'll put, I'll put a little, alone. a mild spoiler warning, uh, yeah. at the beginning of this. Uh, yeah, yeah, because I hadn't heard yeah. that. I, I, I you're I'll gonna never see, you're gonna it. see more Darth. We, we think you're gonna see Darth Maul in Ahsoka. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, they've leaked photos of her fighting him, and it looks fucking dope. <laughs> so every, basically, everyone's just getting their movies now. Yeah, has there been uh, a Darth yeah, Maul sure. movie? Because I wouldn't mind no. seeing a Darth Maul origin. He was. He did. You do see him in uh, Solo, hmm. the uh, the yeah. Ron Howard movie. Yeah, interesting. Anyways, so much to this shit now. God, I used to be a Star Wars expert. Not anymore. John Mark, mm -hmm. back to you, uh, Chris. You now have the lead with fifty-seven. John Mark forty-one. Lyle looking good at forty-four. I have to go with R two D two. Oh, great! <laughs> oh, my mouth is too dry to do a decent. Uh, <laughs> it's more like Bobo from uh, <laughs> Clash of the Titans. He is up there, though, at number seven, which is worth 19 points. That's pretty good. That takes you to uh, 60, an even 60. All right, Lyle, number four, still on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try that with reverb. Yeah, yeah that, that might help. <laughs> <laughs> No, that was straight up gargling. <laughs> oh, wait, okay. No, that was too good. <laughs> that was too chewy. <laughs> we're gonna have a uh, we're gonna call the audience or audience members up from during the show to as a little contest to give us their best Chewbacca yell. And mm -hmm. Chewbacca is on the list at number eight, and that is worth eighteen points, which takes you to. Um, put you back in the lead with 72. Is that right? I'll take that. Huh? 44 plus 18. Uh, no. Um, that's not right. I just have I'm blowing you up with Obi-Wan pictures right now. Sorry. I really should have calculator. Let me just do this with the calculator since I'm getting into the numbers that are too hard for the <laughs> poor remedial <laughs> math, Ronnie, to uh, keep tabs on here. I remember that. 62. I don't know. Yeah, I was way off. Sorry. But that takes you to 62. Um, and, boy, this is a close game. 57 to 60 to 62. You guys know your Star Wars pretty equally here. And that still leaves us with a huge score at number four. Mm -hmm. And two in the top ten. We'll do a few more rounds of this, and then we'll get uh, moving on to some weird ass triv. So go ahead, Chris. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna have to say Luke. Nobody said Luke yet. Let's see where there he's at. There he is. Mm -hmm. Number four with a with the hand. <laughs> Got a hand it to you. Yeah, there's something in one there. Hand. Just one. Wasn't quick. <laughs> they don't get second chances on that. It's not like it regrows. <laughs> Uh, not like a Mar a Darth. I gotta see this Darth Maul thing just to see how they they pull them shits off. But that was worth twenty two points, and that brings you to 
to there's some breathing noise uh, I'm getting from somebody like kind of a activita back off your mic my oxygen okay back <laughs> off <laughs> uh, it only works once Darth Maul. The Darth <laughs> that's my oxygen I used to be able to do a good Darth I've kind of lost it um, all right, but that takes you to 79. Uh, so back to yeah. you, John Mark. Two left in the, uh, uh, yeah, two left in the top 10. Um, did did somebody guess Han Solo already? Yep. Yeah. That was, was number five. That was, okay. Um, just trying to figure out where we're at here. Uh, so There's we got, still more of the old gen. Yeah. Yep. Um. Oof. Um, yeah, there's some classics on here, but the big uh, the big ticket names have mostly been checked. But there's pretty obvious ones. Yeah, uh, I mean, is C three PO really that beloved of a character? <laughs> mm. Squeak a lot. Interesting question. Um, it's pretty comical for the most part. Uh, I'm gonna go with C three PO. What the hell? Okay, he was low on the list. And at first I was kind of disappointed, but then I was like, hmm, how much enjoyment do I actually get out of C-3PO? <laughs> right. Um, yeah, yeah Lyle's right. It was comic relief from those sort of like tense moments where everyone's about to be crushed in a garbage bin or someone just got thrown into a giant man-eating butthole. Uh, it was nice to be able to cut back to those, especially for the kids. But he was on the list at 21, which brings you up to 65. That was worth five points. So that gives Lyle uh, a good chance to get in the lead here if you get one of these uh, top tenors. Mm. Put you back in the lead. One of them, anyway. What I'm thinkable, thinkable. <laughs> well, I'm thinkable. Go on. I'm uh, listenable. I like to think about stuff a lot. Uh, <laughs> uh, pantomime. Uh, what is that her name? Oh, Padma. Padma. Pat Padme. 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 Queen, Padme. Queen Amidala. Padme yeah, Mama, Mama that. <laughs> Is that your guess? Padme, yeah. She's she, lovable. I she, loved her. She's on the she, list, but just barely. She was at 24. So that's worth two points. That bumps you up to 64, though. Um, taken back to Chris. Taking us back to Chris, who still in the lead with 79. Let's see if I'm we can at least with, get uh, this top 10. Lando Calrissian. Good one, and that is that's a decent chunk of points, but he's down at eighteen, but that's worth eight points. Mm. So that gets you up to eighty. Let's see, eighty-eight. And John Mark, if you guys don't get uh, one of the big ones in the next round or two, I think Chris has pretty much sealed the deal here. Man, I'm just trying to think of like who it who's popular well i'm gonna go so through the whole got... list at the end and it'll be another one of those oh yeah but there uh, are yeah. a few kind of head scratchers on here i think in terms of placement maybe um let's see here um got capitan we got the tepity she's um john mark is very thinkable on this hmm? what what okay what about <laughs> Shit. I mean, what about Palpatine? I love Palpatine. Emperor Palpatine, number wow. 15. That's pretty good. Um, and that is good for 11 points, which gives you not quite the lead, but puts you back within uh, maybe a couple of rounds worth. Uh, 76 altogether. So, Lyle, you need one of these big ones. Oh, wow. 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 Has Owen Wilson been in a Star Wars feature yet? It seems like he should some, have. somebody that they would have dropped in one at this point i'm gonna go with anakin skywalker anakin is not on the top 20 list that is or top 25 and that not is our first well i don't know maybe they're counting darth vader but that's not those are two different characters for sure uh, but not on the 25 that is our first whiff Ooh, that could hurt you that could hurt you right here Yes. We'll see. You're going to need Chris deal. to get a whiff here or a low ball yeah. one. And I may survive. because uh, I'm, I'm going with a very heartfelt character for me. Okay. Uh, one who I just read an article uh, with. Uh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Qui Gon Jinn. Uh, Qui Gon. Qui Gon. One of my favorite characters. Wasn't there somebody on the Iron Chef that <laughs> was named something like that? And yeah, you know, the original <laughs> one, the Japanese one, was like Qui Gon. <laughs> I feel like someone was always. 
the host was always saying that or something similar. <laughs> Either way, it's a good guess uh, because that is uh, number 14, which is good for 12 and probably seals the deal. I'm going to give, uh, let's do maybe two more rounds, but I don't think anyone can catch you, but let's let the, you know, see what you guys can guess. But let me get the I, total uh, score I here. That's. Liam Neeson, while you're while you're tabulating, Liam Neeson recently did an interview where he said, "I would totally return to that role and return to Star Wars, even though he's dead. You know, they could do a flashback well, or obviously they can pull him back somehow. Yeah, no sheer kidding. hate, <laughs> sheer joy, yeah, sheer, you know, hatred. If, sure, sure. sheer hatred brought um, Darth Maul back. But sheer he, joy could bring Qui Gon. He said he would uh, refuse to do it unless it was a movie. He wouldn't go on to the shows. Yeah, I was no. like, that's fucking dumb. TV I think the shows. shows are where. Yeah, he was that like, is nineties kind of thinking. It. That's not current thinking, man. TV shows are bigger than movies in a Dude, lot of cases these days i agree i think it's a foolish uh, foolish uh, thing for him to say and do but whatever yeah and and in terms of career that can be something that feeds you for a few years as opposed to one paycheck and you're you know that that's interesting thinking on his part but what's neat is that takes you to an even 100 uh <laughs> i think that we're probably only going to get one more round because i doubt these guys are going to catch yeah, up do or do not there's no try bitches no try <laughs> um john mark do your damnedest. <sighs> Still two in that top um, top ten. Yeah, that's geez, I'm trying to think who would be Um I'm guessing it's somebody from at this point, I guessing it's probably somebody from the newer movies. Um geez, um do, 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 do. How about um, I don't know. I'm just gonna guess Ray. Ray, and I believe she was on the list. That's a good sign. Boy, is she not? Hmm. I, I thought she. There was that was a very polarizing trilogy. Obviously, <laughs> I guess she's not on the list. I I know she was. I feel like she must have been just outside the top twenty-five. But no, hmm. I, there was a decent guess, but not on the top twenty-five. I hate to do this because I'm going to throw it. Hmm. Well, I think it's already but out of your reach, but do it. Do it for uh, the glory. It has been decided. It no, has been I thrown. No, <laughs> think so. In the order of um, the celebration of me eating pizza for dinner tonight, mm, that sounds good. I'm going to go with Pizza the Hut. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Java the Hutt, baby. Oh, Pizza the Hut uh, was an excellent character. Job of the Hut, good guess. Um, nowhere near the top twenty-five. Well, I, I can't say nowhere near, but he's definitely not in the top twenty-five. Yeah, interesting. I guess he was just too disgusting. Well, Chris, you smashed its ass, and I love that you went out on a one, a perfect one hundred. Um, so real quick, I'm going to go through yeah, who did we miss? top 25 <laughs> coming in at 25. Mm -hmm. It's a trap. Admiral, it's a Akbar? Admiral Akbar actually made the top 25 and it's a trap. solely because of that. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it's that it became a meme and you know, I think that's how people remember him. Uh, then we had Padme, uh, <laughs> at 24 and 23. It is a very memorable delivery and perform and character. Uh, 23 is Jine or Jin must be Jin Erso Rogue One. I don't that one didn't. Yeah. Oh my God. Did you not see Rogue One? Jin Erso. I think I did see Rogue One. I can't. I don't know. I, I get. She's the main character of that. She's the one that basically oh, facilitates stealing the Death Star plans, and that's what we see, like at the very beginning of Episode Four, where, you know, Leia's getting the R two D two with the plans in it. Hmm. They okay. get it from this group of rebels that sacrifice themselves. It's I've got Disney Plus. Episode. At some point, I need to start getting caught up on some of these <sighs> shits. So I, I got to say, going through the list and seeing some of these characters, like I, at first I was going to try to bother to pronounce some of these right, um, but I already botched <laughs> one, and I'm like, fuck it. But I did watch a little clip of something new, uh, and I'm like, God, this looks fun. I'm like, it's kind of pulling me back into this world. But 22. Yeah, Ro Rogue One is Rogue One is actually a pretty great movie. Okay. Uh, 22 is Count Dooku, the great no. Christopher Lee is what helped make yeah. that character memorable. Uh, 21 was C-3PO. 20 was K-2-S-O, which I believe oh, is yeah. uh, Rogue One. Solo. Or Rogue One, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. A, a lot of these are from, of course, several films. 19, General Grievous, who uh, oh. <laughs> I thought was kind of a badass character, the little four-armed robot. Uh, well, not so little. And very uh, cantankerous. 
You can picture him. That with used to be a human. He slowly but surely turned sabers. himself into a robot. Wow, you are so up on top of the shit. I don't remember any of the stuff from the prequels. Or when so, Logan was born, I watched stuff. a lot of Star Wars because that's all I could I remember do. That. Watch, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 18 was Lando Calrissian, uh, one of my favorite heroes when I was a kid. I loved Lando. And I, I think one of the reasons that that his image has endured in my head quite <laughs> all these years, because he was prominent but wasn't a huge character in the overall scheme, um, was I had one of those Burger King Empire Strikes Back classes, <laughs> and it was the Lando Calrissian one. Uh, God, I wish I still had all that shit. Number 17, Mace Windu, uh, Sam... Oh yeah, Samuel yeah. L. Jackson's character. That was one says bad motherfucker. I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna guess that, <laughs> but I couldn't remember his name. So I went with Palpatine instead. Yeah. Well, there's a few more coming that you'll probably be like, "Oh, I should have gone with that." Sixteen was criminally low. Boba Fett. Fifteen, Emperor Palpatine. Uh, Fourteen, Qui Gon. Thirteen, Darth Maul. Twelve was Grogu. Oh, Baby, Baby Yoga. Yoga. I was kind of surprised uh, you guys didn't Yoga. get there on that one. Did I say Yoga? <laughs> Here come the whiskey. What about, what? Was like Krylo, to call him Ron on there? <laughs> Krylo Ron. Uh, no, he was not on the list either. Which I kind of thought was. I liked him. Surprising. I, liked him. I thought he was. I think he's. Yeah. I think he's developing. I think uh, he'll probably be uh, high on that list. Maybe even this year if it was taken. But um, where are we? Baby Yoga at twelve. Eleven was <laughs> Captain. I keep saying Yoga. It's because it's right next to Grogu. There are too many G's <laughs> leading me up to. I hate Grogu. I hate that name though. I, I wasn't fond of Grogu. Yeah, Baby Yoda does play better, and Some it's better Go-Gurt. marketing. Grogurt. <laughs> Grogurt. <laughs> Ooh, do not want your Grogurt. Um, no, thank you, Baby Yoga. Uh, number eleven is Captain Rex. That's a new one to me. Oh, yeah. He's a clone. Uh, Ten, Princess Leia. Nine, a big one you guys missed, the Mandalorian. Oh, I wondered if that was, yeah, I had a feeling. Because he mentioned there was like as early as 2021. I was like, it's my Mandalorian. No, I haven't seen the show. Did they just call him the Mandalorian because there's no name? No, No, his name is Jin. He has a name. That's funny. It's funny that everyone else has a name, but they just said the main alarm. Uh, He has a name, but they don't use it much. Yeah, kind of like the the Clint Eastwood movies, The Man with No Name. He actually does have a name. uh, Okay, eight is Chewbacca, seven, R2-D2, six, the last one in the top ten nobody got. And Chris Setter, Ahsoka. Oh yeah. Am I saying that right? Oh, Ahsoka Tom. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, that would have been yep. worth twenty points. She yeah. was she was uh it's really cool. She was the Padawan of um Anakin before mm. he went to the dark side. Uh, so she trained under him and then she's getting her own series and we're gonna see like we think we're gonna see well, I don't know if we're gonna see the rematch. <laughs> you know, last week I inspired you to delete your Facebook. This week you're inspiring me to sit at my uh computer and watch fucking star wars over the next couple Please weeks watch some. i should well it's a good time to do it because i am yeah. i starting to work on writing my star wars bits so i guess i could call it research just just jump right into there the mandalorian you, you just that would be a great place to start because it's you don't think i should go back new. and uh last movie i think i watched was force awakens i don't think i need to go back and watch the next one I mean, <laughs> that's fine that's correct okay no i like those movies don't get me wrong but I think you would yeah. really At least, latch on to the Mandalorian. I thought the Force Awakens was yeah, fine. Yeah, it's it's like a good show. Movie. The the I like the Last Jedi better. It's very polarizing, but I like that better yes. than. But you I, know what's the best one of the three that I agree? And he's gonna recently. he's getting a trilogy. Ryan Johnson is gonna do his own Star Wars. It was been on and off, but it's been confirmed now. He's doing a, a trilogy of movies. Jesus, I, I'm about time. I did have a hard yeah, time believing too. that Han Solo was dead, and I remember we talked about this. <laughs> yeah, you, you guys all thought I was sure. stupid for thinking they were going to bring him back, and it looks like I no. was because they haven't brought him back. <laughs> but, but can't hold his They brought Darth fucking Maul back. The they cut him in <laughs> <Yeah>. two. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to send you the three minute YouTube clip on like what happened, so you can get the gist. They it's, cut it's him fast. in two, sir. <laughs> We yeah. just saw Han Solo get st- <laughs> stuck with the fucking saber and fall off a bridge into fog. But There's a perfect opportunity only, for him to the be. The difference is they felt him die. You see Leia like feel his force and slip away. You know what How I mean? They, you know? see they never felt react. him die before. How can they know that's what they're feeling? <laughs> Fair enough. Could he be dead or just falling down a shaft? We don't know anything is possible. The Force has several ideas of death. All right. um, Five was Han. Four was Luke. Three, Yoda. Two, Obi-Wan. And number one with a bullet and an overwhelming percentage of the votes. Darth fucking Vader. I think uh, think that plays. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Darth Vader. We love Darth Vader. 
we liked to see him vanquished. And we, we did root for, I think most of us as kids rooted for, you know, the, uh, the rebellion, but it's, uh, you, you can't imagine those movies without Darth fucking Vader. He was everything that those movies were in a funny way. And every time it There's went back scene. to Vader, especially when we were just tiny kids, it's like, oh, fuck, here we go. Here we go. But it was like, it was fascinating to watch. Well, and the last had... minute, the last minute of Rogue One is a Darth Vader scene where he just like there's all these rebels in the hallway and they know he's in there and all you, it's dark and all you see is the fucking shoo, the red fucking lightsaber come up yeah, and he just yeah. slaughters a room full of motherfuckers like with the force with the saber. It's so scary. Mm. I can't you know, wait to for you guys to see my trailer for the burlesque show. <laughs> when we had her, <clears throat> when we were young. Anyway, the. Uh, that end of that scene where he's he's there with uh, Han Solo and he's dying and he's like uh, son, and all this stuff it, it was touching mm-hmm. it was like tear jerker because you, you know it wasn't was touching evil fucker the whole time and then he was like eh, he's not so bad Darth Vader uh, pre credits no <laughs> still one of my top five we should do a uh, we should take time to think about this sometime down the road and do our top five stupidest star wars moments oh there's so the, many the darth vader no has got to be high up there brah uh on my fucking list you um, say people gonna die well jar jar binks was in in, in its entirety was a uh <laughs> a bad happening um yeah. by the way before well no actually i'll save that because uh, we're going to get to Weird Triv. I'm going to pee real quick, and I think we're about ready to dive into some WT, yeah? Awesome. Quick break, and then I'll get our guest on. All right. It's Weird Trivia with Christopher F. Hart. A man from Florida who thinks square shit in nature. Don't get me started on the goddamn brown hair. Christopher Please welcome to the program, Aislinn. Yay! Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I welcome. Th- We're glad to have you. Finally, you've been talking enough shit online. It's about time. <laughs> yeah, what? what? <laughs> now? Love talking shit. And I it's love p- talking about how bad you all are at this game. Yes. Oh, well, is it ever time to put up or shut up <laughs> to <laughs> shut very up um so i'm excited to see how you're gonna do if only yeah, to we'll see. Uh, i might just fail spectacularly most if, if, people do if you're gonna do it now's the time to do it uh, <laughs> i love how everyone comes in thinking they're gonna be hot shit and i think only well, one or two cool. people have made it past you guys yeah and it's usually people that do well at home um so it's just a different experience but before we get moving on, <clears throat> here we have uh, some of the comments from last episode. Sarah Ray Shields, who did battle with us and failed, sadly, last week <laughs> says, I swear a lot playing weird trivia and in real life. I apologize for nothing because the internet told me smart people swear a lot. Mm-hmm. I would like to get consensus on that. I hear that a lot, too. I don't know. There's probably one of these bullshit things. Or how could it really be true? But I like the idea of it. But uh, sometimes, I don't know, sometimes when I, I curse like a drunken sailor, of course, but sometimes when I hear other people doing it, it does, they do it in a way that does kind of sound dumb. I don't know. There's a limit. <laughs> There's well, a finesse to it to some degree, but it's intangible. About it. You, you can't just somebody's IQ about it. But like, I've noticed it with uh, some of my streams that like, sometimes I'll just, you know, be myself. Mm hmm. You know, and and just not give a fuck. <laughs> but then uh, when I watch it back, I'm like, wow, you didn't really have to say that. You just could, <laughs> wow, like, could have just done that. an Owen Wilson. Wow, oh, oh wow, 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 wow. That's Andrea, great. No, or sorry, what, Peter, Peter, on, Andrea. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Andrea Smith Newburn said, "Ron singing, I ain't me, and you ain't you. I'm fine, I'm fine. Had me so close to peeing my pants at work." Can we get a full version of the disassociating song? The funny thing about that is, as Sarah pointed out to me, (laughs) apparently that's based on an old racist song. You know, the old doo-da, doo-da. I don't remember that being associated with racism. But uh, I I think the version I heard when I was a kid was already a dumbed-down version of it. But I guess Camp Town Races, I think, is the name of the song. I looked it up. And, uh, yeah, even the the doo-da, doo-da, supposed to be like making fun of how black folk talk back then 
uh, I don't remember the rest of the lyrics, but I apologize for <laughs> making that the structure for the disassociating song. I'm going to try to disassociate oh. myself with that moving forward. Uh, whoopsie daisy. Russ McCaw says, Thanks for the win, Mr. Ron. I did not think I was eligible to play after my championship victory, but I will always take a win in my life. We'll talk mm -hmm. more about that in just a minute. Not your life, but uh, moving forward, how we're going to do the program. <laughs> Jacob Roberts says, hey, my work day just got better, plus really dug Lyle's album choice. Forgot how good any album or how, how good of an album it was. Uh, thanks for that. Sarah said, okay, but can we talk about how Ron thinking this song, and she posted Wild World by Cat Stevens, was about a wide world? Okay, I do know, I'm a, I'm a Cat Stevens fan, and I do understand that it's, ooh, baby, baby, it's a wild with an L world. But for some reason in my head, it absolutely, I, I sang it wide, I said it wide. Uh, but as I mentioned on the post, I would like to invoke the, yeah, but still defense. <laughs> it still proved my point. In, uh, but yes, to be fair, I did get that wrong. Sarah Ray Shields goes on to say her favorite Bruce Willis movie is The Whole Nine Yards. And Michael mm. celebrated the new episode and said, woo, in the sashy mm. voice. So there's your feedback roundup off the old episode. And Chris, I think you got some folks we are going to be playing for here. Um, I do think, I guess we'll get, we'll have to see because if Aislinn, if Aislinn wins, we're still going to need another round of this way Correct. to get to a championship round. But after that, we're going to go back to just playing for ourselves because you may have noticed we've gone through maybe the same 10 or 12 people that are commenting on Facebook and playing and people haven't really wanted to email us to be a part of it. So I think we have kind of cycled through that enough. Uh, to have gone back to something else. So what we want to do is what we've been doing lately, which is we play for ourselves and we have a guest on when we can. Now, it would be great to have one of you on every week. And even if that got a little repetitive, well, who cares? You just become a regular occurring guest. I mean, why not come back? You know, if you're the only one that's participating. But for now, we'd like to cycle them through just like we've been doing with who we've been playing for. But time to mix it up a little bit concerning that. I guess Aislinn will be the ultimate deciding factor here because if she loses, that means next week we will uh, start going there. But if you do want to be on the show like Aislinn and maybe her uh, colossal failure today will chase you and scare you away from doing so. But if you want to, you can reach out to Christopher at Christopher.Bazaar at gmail.com. That'd be the best way to get on board for that. And without Man, no pressure or anything. No, yeah. no, I set it up. <laughs> so all you I, have to do is it's easy peasy. I had a question for you. And this is a roundabout. Everybody needs to answer this. Mm -hmm. Do you think in 2022, fanny packs can make a comeback? Mm -hmm. Did they ever leave? I think they, I've, I've been seeing them lately. Look, if mom jeans can make a comeback, mom jeans and mullets are back. So yeah, fanny packs are the least of our troubles. They make Coachella <laughs> next year, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I, oh, yeah. I, okay, guys. I went to a concert and it was filled with fanny packs. Mm. I found three while I was cleaning up. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, oh shit. If those are, if those, those are from '99, <laughs> <laughs> shit, son, you got two vintage. Those That's are the real crazy. deal. Mm -hmm. Back when they really didn't give a shit if they looked cool. <laughs> right. Now they try to make them like, uh, you know, they can tie them into any franchise. They can color coordinate them better. Back then, they were just a shiny black vinyl. Baby, you got a blue stripe going down the middle of it. Maybe you didn't, uh, depending on how high up the hill you lived. But all right, without further ado, let's get on. Uh, see what okay. we got tonight. Uh, Ron, you won three times in a row. Is that accurate? I was Dare hoping I you say? wouldn't say it aloud because I feel like yeah. getting to four would be, you know, yeah. like saying so baby Yoda to... correctly. <laughs> it just ain't <laughs> happening tonight, but it's we'll see. Gonna... Uh, well, you're going to be playing for Andrea Smith Newburn. John Mark, you're going to be playing for Michael Warfield, and Lyle's going to be playing for Melody Stair. And Aislinn will be representing herself at the end there. Uh, you guys ready to start this? <laughs> Y'all ready to start this? Let's do it. <laughs> uh, okay. Baby yoga, question. don't fail me now. I'm going to need the force. Yeah, shit. Mm -hmm. uh, question one in a recent interview Nick Cage shared that he turned down this major role 
in lieu of spending time with his family. Now, I found this to be a bit shocking. Uh, what role did Nick Cage uh, – did we almost get a Nick Cage version of? What was it? Was it A, Neo from The Matrix? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was Lawrence Fishburne's character, yeah? Oh, no. No, that's no, that uh, was Keanu. 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 Yeah. I know reason. Yeah. Was it B, there the voice of Shrek? <laughs> it ain't oh, easy look. being green. <laughs> I'm a swamp man, you see? Uh, was it C, Where's Aragon one? from Lord of the Rings? Oh, okay. Or was it D, all of the motherfucking above? Ooh, I was not counting e on a fucking D. Of that uh -huh. matter, you did say it Again, shocked you. He turned down uh, this role. <laughs> turned it down. Was offered to him. God. Neo, okay, the voice of Shrek, Aragorn, or all of the above. That is such Bronster. a brilliant time to pull out an all of the above. Uh -huh. <laughs> they call me Aragorn. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't even remember which one was Aragorn at this point. But he's the main. He's the he's the main guy. Return of the King. You know. Yeah. He's like the guy that's the ranger. That helps Frodo out in the Grand Team Pony. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, that, I was thinking. Mm -hmm. I was thinking so. Uh, yeah, but the funny thing is, the more you read and the more you see the Lord of the Rings, the more those names just blend into my brain. And I have a hard time keeping that straight. I feel like I read something at some point about a Nick Cage Lord of the Rings thing, but oh, the all of the above thing, you're fucking with me on that. But I think I have to take it. <laughs> I think yes. I got to take it because I respect it. I respect it too much. <laughs> and fucking crazy career this dude's have. It wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me. And I'm dying to see that new movie where he's playing himself. I, yeah. I can't remember what it's called. Terrible Something like talent. Yes. <laughs> it's, that looks so fucking wacky. What a career. Um, yeah, I'm going with D, all the above. Probably going to regret it. All right. <laughs> Joe Mark. Yeah, I'm going to go with that too. Oh, Ooh. shit. I instantly have half the regret. No, oh, really. Hmm. I'm going to go with uh, Legos, Lord of the Rings. Legos? Legos. <laughs> Legolas. He oh, has sorry, no Legos. He is Legolas. <laughs> I'm Legolas. Yes. Okay. Legolas. Well, he wasn't on the list, but you're, we, you're going with A. Are you going you're with going B? with Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah, Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Aragon, not Legolas. Oh, course. my bad. See, that's what I do, though. It all blends yeah. in my fucking head. Sword, yeah. Sure. Well, okay. he, he looks like the part. Yeah, sure. Okay. Ace, Ace Lynn? Uh, I'm going to go with A, Neo. Neo, okay. Boy, this is interesting. Okay. Uh, okay, guys. All over the place. Question two. Now. Lyle, I need you to get ready because question two is not only a listener-submitted question, but it's also a Florida Daily Dubs. That's right. We're going to go ahead and make this Shit. worth three points. Can I get a triple points, Lyle? Triple points. Perfect. Oh, I like the abrupt cut. I like that. Yeah. Abrupt cut. Three Straight points on the line here, okay? Ugh, these make me nervous. Uh, <laughs> thanks to Jeff Hall for sending this one over to me, and I do have a photo to share with this as well. Just a moment here. You'll see right away that this is a very Florida-based subject. <laughs> Or a question, I should say. That's just your mm. dick. That's show. Whoops. <laughs> There's Obi. Sorry, Aislinn. Obi Wan. Mm, there we go. Send this one. That's not my dick. Perfect. Okay. A man in Florida who I shit you not has the state of Florida <laughs> tattooed onto his forehead what? ended up in trouble it was a birth with the mark. law. Uh, after uh, at 4 a.m., he drunkenly called this number over and over again trying to get a ride home. When he couldn't afford a cab. Who was he calling? Was it A, the Taco Bell drive through line? <laughs> couldn't be an emergency. Got to totally. be on the speed. Speedy. Is it B, a local landscaper whose flyer he found on the ground? <laughs> I'm here for right. all of your landscaping needs. Mm -hmm. uh, was it C, his 16-year-old... Excuse me just a second. Quiet, boy. Every now and then I feel a little... That's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> what? Is it C, 
his 16-year-old child, bride's cousin and brother, which is the same person. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Cousin brother. Somewhere in the distance of Banjo State. That please. was like uh, just morphed into a... Or is it D, 911? 911. Well, that was the first thing to come to my mind, but... It's kind of tame after all these, and this is a triple fucking pointer. Oh. Again, 4 a.m., he was drunk, trying to get home, and instead of getting a cab, he called this number over and over and over again until the cops were dispatched. <laughs> was it the Taco Bell drive through line, a local landscaper whose flower he found on the ground, his 16-year-old child bride's cousin and brother, or cousin brother, if you will, or 911? <laughs> that one sounds Christopher F. hard colorful, but... That doesn't mean we can rule it out. I'm torn between <clears throat> Taco Bell. I feel like it's probably 911, but I'm going a little more colorful. I'm going to go. <coughs> I'm torn between uh, the landscaper and Taco Bell. Taco Bell comes up a lot on the show. This is my weird, out loud, Ronalize. But I, I think I'm going to go with the landscaper just because it's the more obscure. I don't know. It's a, it's a total fucking guess. <laughs> Tough one. I'm gonna be pissed if it's what the was that? cousin Did uncle. That, that mm -mm. Oh, that was me drinking my truly a little aggressively. Oh, okay. <laughs> Somebody who was maybe making Bloop. a little dick. Bloop, bloop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just on my phone doing a little news quiz, doing blue. Mm -hmm. Um, John Mark. John Mark. Um, I'm gonna go with nine one one. John Mark's going with 911. Give me a ride, please. That probably happens a lot, actually. Mm -hmm. mm. Lyle. Out of all of that, I just have to go with 911. Because they are there to serve us, not for them to serve <laughs> uh, you. <laughs> to <Wait>. serve. <laughs> serve. Clearly to says right there sir. on your badge. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I need to ride home. Protect I to tell serve you. and protect my heels from walking my ass. One time, I'm going to tell a quick story. One time, I was like 18 years old. I was drunk as hell. I was leaving a buddy's house. And this house was kind of in a not-so-great neighborhood. But it's like whatever. It's, I don't know, 12 blocks from where, you know, my house was. And I had, it was in the middle of the winter time, And it's at 4 in the morning. Quite like this story. And I had my hands in my pocket. And I made it maybe like two houses down the road heading home. And behind me, I hear a car door open up and uh, freeze, get your hands out of your pockets. I'm like, I turn around and look and it's a cop and he's he's got his gun pointed at me over the top of his hood. Jesus. Like through the window, like over the top of the window with his door open. And I'm like, yo, dude, what's up? <laughs> I'm just going home, man. He goes, well, there's been a lot of like uh, stereo robberies here. I said, dude, I swear to you, fucking, I literally just left that house just like literally 20 seconds ago. And he's like, well, you know, he gave me some shit and then fucking, he didn't even have <laughs> And the, the investigation comes to a close. <laughs> well, yeah, no. <laughs> that story checks out. Shit, Chief fucking oh, Wiggum. Well, he asked if I had any, uh, like, a, like a license or identification. I didn't that time. Not on me. And uh, he said, well, whatever, whatever. You just go home. I was like, I'm going home. You know, you could have the courtesy of give me a ride home, you know. Or not knew. pulling a fucking gun on somebody who he's not even <laughs> going to ask for identification. You... Wow, that's a weird, that's a yeah. weird story. I think that cop was all jumped up on something. That was the 90s, brother. <laughs> what at you, cops? Has it, have any of you guys ever had a gun pointed at you, like legitimately? Mm, no. Yes. <laughs> in that well, story. yeah, not, Lyle does. Aislinn? <laughs> no, I can't. I had one waved at me at a pool party, but mm. not pointed. I had one. Had, yeah, someone was either about to do a drive-by ride on me or uh, just pretending to, but another car came, and they got back in the car and drove off. It's about five feet away from me. I'll never fucking forget that guy's face. <laughs> Whew. All right. Uh, sorry, Chris. Um, we'll probably need. Do you need to recap on the answers there? Anybody? Uh, I think I think it's Ace. Am, it's just me, right? Yeah. 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 No, I, uh, I'm going to go with A, Taco Bell. Putting all my things in Crunchwrap Supreme. This is an interesting game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Question three. On average, how long would it take a sloth to travel an entire mile? Is it five days? Mm. 12 days? 20 days? 
or an entire month. <laughs> Monster. Wow. Um, five days was A? Mm-hmm. Five, 12, 20, or an entire month. Yeah, I better shoot Travel something one more in the middle here. Five feels right, but I, I feel like I need to go somewhere in the middle for some reason. I'm going to go 12. 12 days to okay. go. Well, God. I'm, what, what was C? 20. When in doubt, go with C. That's what they taught me in school. I'm going to go with uh, 20. Okay. John Mark? I'm going to go with an entire month. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can kind of see it. I mean, good Lord. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> if this brother is stopping at Taco Bell to get a crunch wrap, it's going to take a full month. You know that. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Dude, slots are so slow. You ever watch them to even just like fucking go, or like, I don't know, five inches on a branch? Yeah, like, like, but, do they, but do they only they're have like, one speed is the question. Yeah. Because like, they really have a journey and they know where they're going. Maybe yeah. maybe we haven't seen that footage. I don't yeah. think it's possible. I think they're really slow. What are you going with? You going for the whole month then? Oh, totally. 100%. Yeah. Well, I probably should have gone. I'm Think about a yeah, mile. I know. I should have gone with that. But uh, I'm sticking with my C. Yeah, you're probably right. pretty. I got it. Uh, let's try 12 days. Beat. Oh, hmm. okay. I like how Aislinn has oh. played this. She doesn't give two shits how we gone. <laughs> I don't That's think great. she went with any of us the whole time, has she? No, I'm uh, mostly I'm counting good. on you to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, up until the last month, I would say that's a good tactic, but uh, we shall see. Okay, guys. Uh, here's the question for, for you. This is kind of fun. Uh, Judith Love Cohen, who helped create the abort guidance system that rescued the Apollo 13 astronauts went to work the same day she was in labor with her child. Now she took a printout of a problem she was working on to the hospital. She called her boss to tell them that she had worked the problem out and then simply proceeded to give birth to her baby. Who would later become this famous actor? Who was her baby? Is it Jack Black? Holly Berry? Charlize Theron? Or Tom Hanks. Well, you know how I love me some Apollo 13. <laughs> and I don't know that I know this fucking story. Um, mm -hmm. I just started listening to that Apollo 13 real-time audio again the other night when I couldn't sleep out of the blue. Interesting. Um, I'm going to go with Jack Black. Something is ringing a bit true with that. But I just heard a, a story about Jack Black because, you know, his dad lives just a couple hours yeah. away from Wenatchee, so he, he comes to the area quite a bit. It was tied to that, but he's fresh in my mind. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it an omen. I should know this. Okay. I'll put you down for Jack Black here. John Mark? Maybe I do. I'm also going with Jack Black. Oh. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. I was going to go, uh, Sharshish. Sharshish? Oh, Tharamon. Or was it E? Tharamon. Sharshish. Sharshish, Sarah Moon. Yeah, number C. Wait, letter C. <laughs> mm, so Wait. saith. Letters. Mm. Are you going with Charlie Theron, Lyle? Sharshish, Sarah Moon. Oh, that's what you were trying to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I forgot she was an that's option. That's what I'm talking about. Mm, that's a good Aisling? guess. That feels, that rings true, too. Well, I, Jack Black, I know his, his he does have ties up to Tanaskin. Everybody knows that. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't know if his mom was, like, part of the whole uh, space shuttle. The, the, the lore. Mm -hmm. Aislin, what say you? Yeah, <laughs> you you going I'm as far away from me? I'm very confident that it's Jack Black. What? Say, say that again? Jack Black, for sure. Oh, oh wow. you're very confident. Wow. Very confident. That's oh, the first oh. time she's gone with me. Now I am fairly confident that she knows the story. But we shall see quite soon. Okay, mm -hmm. let's uh, let me do a little tabulating here in just a moment. What was his mom's name? Uh, his mom's. <clears throat> sorry, hold on. I'll go back to Judith Love Cohen. Oh, or, see. Or her mom's name. You don't know her or his. I haven't given you the answer yet. All right. Let's, uh, <clears throat> damn it. Uh, okay, let's see here. I'm doing my screen. Well, if John Mark's confident about it, then it's probably right. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That was a. Uh, yeah. Not a backhand compliment. That was a, that was just a full on smack. What? Yeah. Well, no, it wasn't. John Mark. You're said it waving was right. at John Mark, and then you smacked. 
Aislinn he's he's educated and well traveled. Yeah, but Aislinn was extra confident. She, and you didn't seem to think that that John mattered. Mark was also confident he was just playing it cool cuz there were still people to answer. Mm-hmm. That's the better way to do it. See, I like <laughs> I like to analyze things out and talk Word. about it. that's that's my favorite part of this game actually is just sort of processing out loud, but it can sometimes sway the ship, especially since I often go it de- first. It depends on where you are in, in the list, too. It absolutely it's a, it's a, depends. How, how, how confident you can make yourself sound. Confident you want to be. Well, I'm not confident, I can tell you that. But Well, I'm confident because of you guys, but I didn't. I don't think I know the story. Okay, let's go over the answers here and see who won. Uh, question one. In a recent interview, Nick Cage shared that he turned down this major role in lieu of spending family time. I did find this to be a bit shocking. We were talking about all three of them. What? Neil from The Matrix, oh The wow. Voice of Shrek, no. and Eric God of Lord of the Rings. He was offered all of those roles and turned them down. Could wow. you imagine? I'm so ashamed of myself. Mm-hmm. Did you guys know that know. I'm wa- working on watching all Nick Cage movies? I've gone mm-hmm. through about 70 of them. There's about wow. Holy ten. shit. <laughs> Are you going in order? And why? No, absolutely not. <laughs> You're just I on a thing? Just, you know, just doing all- a thing. Okay. Have you watched Willy's Wonderland yet? Oh, I have. Yeah. So good. So good. Okay. There's probably uh, 50 movies of his that I haven't even fucking heard of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ron and John Mark got that correct. Their point of pop. Starting things off strong. Okay. Uh, question two was worth triple points. And thanks for Jeff. Thanks to Jeff Hall for sending this gem over to me. This is key. Uh, a man in Florida who, I shit you not, has the state of Florida tattooed on his forehead. Ended up in jail after at 4 a.m. he called 911 about a dozen times asking for a ride. Oh. Oh. Damn it. Billy Dubs. John Mark and Lyle, right there. Oh, Three that's points. a, that's oh, a that's game bad. changer, probably game yeah. winner. Damn. I hate yeah. to do the triple Definitely points awesome. sometimes, but listener submitted in no. for Dubs. Listen, I, I could have could guessed right. <laughs> 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 I could have guessed right just like they did. Oh, was uh, it question. only John Mark that got that? No, John Mark and Lyle. Yeah, fuck. Yep. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, way down. Question three. On mm-hmm. average, it would take a sloth to walk a whole mile an entire month. No. They are one of the slowest make- moving creatures for their size, especially. Uh, it would take them a whole month on average to make that journey. I think most of them will probably just die in the process. Right? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, um, fuck okay, stop this. Bill, yeah. Fuck it. Uh, John, Mark, and Lyle got that correct as well. <laughs> Lyle, did you marry the Taco beating. Bell and Sloth story in your head? I don't uh, think Taco Bell was part of this one. I did. Well, they got to stop and eat, you know. Sure. It's one <laughs> month. It's up all night. A okay, whole month. Lastly, question. A month. Yeah, a whole month. 30 days. Has anyone ever made uh, it? <laughs> or did they just measure uh, 30 yards and long? say, I think, <laughs> and multiply yeah, that I think into it's more a month? Just, just how you know how far they go for, for miles per hour. You I hope someone didn't MPH. just send a poor sloth on a mild journey just to test. Like, but good luck, motherfucker. <laughs> we've done that's worse. A whole, that's a whole Lord of the Rings story right there. <laughs> <laughs> the Grif, okay, question the lamest four. adventure. Yeah. Judith Love Cohen, who helped create the abort guidance system that rescued the Apollo 13 astronauts, went to work the same day she was in labor. She took a printout of a problem she was working on to the hospital. She called her boss to tell him she'd work the problem out and then proceeded to give birth to her baby boy, a little boy named Jack. Oh, Jack Black. No oh, way. What a story. John, John Mark, and Aislinn all got that correct, making John Mark the king tonight. Yeah, Good job. Four, four, four points. Michael Warfield is ready to be in the championship round we will have when we next record. Congratulations. Did, I'm sorry, could you do a quick tally of Aislinn's score for me, please? <laughs> I got one. <laughs> one whole point. Was that one? I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. But yeah. I just wanted to double check just to be sure. Just to make sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us I th- tonight. Yeah, I think I got all of those right. Yeah. Let's down. see. Okay. You, missed, you, you missed you. Uh, you missed. What was the second question? I thought you missed one. Uh, no, you I got, got the missed none of them. Triple pointer. Right. Did he get all of them? Uh, let's all of them. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I think he did get all of them. Oh, he did get every shit. single one right. He pointed to the back uh, part of the diamond and uh, that's a five pointer. Swung a shot, and let me tell you, wait, home six run. pointer. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yep. Six pointer. Yeah, that deserves that. to be I'm pointed back, out. Baby. You are back with the vengeance. Yeah, what happened? You you went uh, dormant for a while. Lyle had a run. I had a run. John Mark is back with the vengeance. I got the runs. You, you oh. Christopher had the runs. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. Mm. Some sloth is halfway to Taco Bell. We've had quite mm. ourselves a month. Well, Aislinn, thanks for joining us. Uh, let me yeah. ask you this, though. Do you usually kick ass at this when you're listening at home? Is that the... Uh... I do. I feel like usually the questions... <laughs> I don't know. Or more things that I've read. Fair. <laughs> this question <laughs> round was bullshit and unfair. Yeah. No, it was totally fair. I just lost. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and it happens. And uh, yeah. we do. I, was, I totally guessed on, all, on most of them. <laughs> Ew, that's extra painful. Uh, well, that's how I win a lot of mine. Uh, yeah. Maybe that's the way to do it. Although, if you think you know, how do you guess? Yeah. <laughs> There's no guessing when you think you know. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much, Aislinn, for joining us. Uh, we need to have you back on. We are. I did get an email. I, I did get one Ask Aislinn email. So we will Hell have you yeah. back on in the not-too-distant future. I need to remember to plug it, and I guess we just did. If you want your... <laughs> and now people are like, why would we ask her anything? Uh, who? who? <laughs> ask what? <laughs> and what? Uh, you know, we, we were doing sex or relationship questions. Do you yeah, want to do you want to keep it at that? I mean, sure. I love talking about things like that. I also, you know, have had some changes in my life. Now I'm a city council member. Oh, shit. <laughs> Not that that is super necessarily in line with what's on the typical docket for this podcast, but <laughs> I'd be happy uh -huh. to answer any local governance questions. Okay. Um, any Nick Cage movie question? <laughs> <laughs> no, Other now you're talking. Other turned down. Once he's in, I know a lot about yes. the movies that he's in. <laughs> yeah, well, that's uh, we can you can send that you got to, you have your own web page set up for that that they can go straight to. Yeah. Oh God, we'll see if I've even got it. Still well, let's uh, maybe next time we can we can uh, <laughs> push that. But for now. But yeah, no, I uh, have a rich and storied history, and am also successfully partnered, so I do feel somewhat qualified to. And you talk have a very these. interesting situation with your partner uh it's an open oh. open situation and that's one that i think a lot of people even if they aren't they aren't interested in dabbling in themselves it's something that they have questions about and this can be anonymous you know you don't have to sign your name to it i won't expose what your email is you can send for now you can send any of those questions to my email radarstationart at gmail.com and put Ask Aislinn in the uh, subject, and we'll get it in the queue. But we've already got one waiting for you. So maybe in Love a couple of weeks when we come back, um, we'll get you back in that rotation. We'll see how that works. But thanks cool. for joining us tonight, and looking forward to having you back on. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Have a good night. night. <laughs> Have a good night. night. <laughs> that was very that was adorable. <laughs> And I think on that, we will all have us a good night night. Um, have a good night night. And we won't be here next week because it's oh. just, like I said, there's just no way. We might have to miss two weeks. I think I'll probably be able to do one the week after. But uh, I'll find a good rerun from the archives. we got a whole pile of good reruns that I know most of you have not heard. And if you have, it's been a while from the old show. So I've got a few things to fill the space and uh, lots of great interviews with guests that we used hey, to have uh, on. Uh, yeah. Quick quick question. Did we did we skip out on episode 92 because it looks <laughs> like we went from 91 to 93. I'm glad you brought that up. No. When <laughs> I edit these, I am exhausted. It's usually about midnight or 1 a.m. by the time I get them edited and, and uploaded and do all the the shit. The very last thing that I'm doing is writing the descriptions and putting the information out onto mm -hmm. out into the world. And once it's out, it's out. And I yeah. accidentally just got one episode ahead. Last episode, this is actually episode 93. The last one was 92, but I labeled it 93. So you didn't miss an episode, folks. I'm just going to label this one 93 again <laughs> so that we get back on Targ for 100 because I, I, I want that to be the actual 100th episode. But yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Nope, just a very drunk and tired Ron doing the should coding have, probably in the undies at uh, should, the wee uh, hours of the morning. Do it 2.0. I thought about that, but I don't, I'll try that. If, if it lets me, I don't think it'll let me do that, but I'll try it. <laughs> if it. If it does let me do a decimal, uh, I'll, I'll drop that in there, but that might screw it up too. So we'll see. 93-92 or 93 mm -hmm. parentheses 92. <laughs> <laughs> or nine and then the word three. Yeah, well, I'll experiment. <laughs> we'll see what I can get away with. It's still Time gonna, trouble. It's still going to put a number next to them anyway in some apps, so it might get super confusing, but oh well, we'll get back on target. 
<laughs> and uh, all right. Well, have a good week or two, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and keep those emails a coming. And do, do remember to send us your pick for most underrated LP of all time. Dying to hear what your guys is. I'm ready to hear some new shit. Hopefully it doesn't have to be something super obscure. It'll probably be something that we haven't heard. The one, the two that we already got, I haven't heard these. I haven't even heard of the bands. I'm being honest. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, send that again to radarstationart at gmail.com and we will get that in the mix and be talking about that in the not too distant future. Other than that, have a good week, week and a half, two weeks. When we get back, we'll be talking about 9 11. Night, y'all. Hey, guys. Good night, night. Good night. The Force be with you. Good night. Good night, 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 night. Good night, night. Good night, 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 Try that with reverb. Yeah, yeah that, that might help. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was straight up gargling. <laughs> <laughs>